All right, hello, hello, everybody. Happy Friday. It's an early Friday for this, but yes, happy Friday all the same. And welcome to um, a couple of things. Uh, of course, as you can, you know, see on your screen, the E3 void has returned. It's been, you know, about two years since you've we've we've uh, last visited the E3 void. Um, because, you know, there wasn't really an E3 in 2019, or I mean, I'm sorry, in uh, 2020. Um, and so we return now because there was an E3 this year. It was all digital. And, um, well, well, we'll get more into the details and how I felt about it overall in a brief moment. I just wanted to say, yeah, I know it's, it's early. Um, and why exactly uh, I am streaming early. So number one, I wasn't really doing anything. Uh, I, you know, I got off work kind of early today. Um, so I figured... I might as well just stream now, and also because number two, uh, I, of course I normally stream later in the night, um, but I might have some kind of bad weather here um, later when I would normally start. Um, I'm kind of in the path of the, uh, the potential tropical cyclone three, um, so you know just in case I would had like a poor connection or lose power or something, I figured now nah, I'll just do it now while it's not too bad out. Um, it's a bit windy and rainy right now, but, you know, the the worst stuff will probably be later in the night. So, I figured, hey, I'll uh, start streaming early. Um, anyways, though, yes, so we're going to begin with uh, E3 2021 discussion, and then we will move on to, uh, as the title suggests, a new indie game that came out during E3 uh, called Chicory. I, I think I'm saying that right. Um, or Chicory. Uh, a Colorful Tale. It's a very, very... Uh, distinct and just really cool looking game um they i believe they showed it uh at the summer games fest which was like kind of the first big e3 thing that happened it was on like a thursday or friday um of last week something i think it was no it, yeah it was thursday of last week so that was kind of the big kickoff to e3 hosted by of course jeff Keeley. um he started it last year uh as kind of a way to um kind of have an E3 since, you know, E3 last year got cancelled really abruptly because of all the stuff that was going on. Uh, and this year's was really good. Um, and then, of course, it led into actual E3, which happened. So, um, I have all of the big things that really interested me here in the E3 void, of course, with our patent and uh, uh, little push pins, um, as I've used before in the past with discussion things. Um, so, before we begin, let me get some background music, because I don't think I've done that before with... Uh, with these discussions. So let's go ahead and get some of that going. I don't know. I, I was thinking of just doing... I'm just going to do this for now. The uh, Yoshi Star Galaxy music from Mario Galaxy 2. Alright. Anyways. So, E3 2021. Like I said, kind of started with um, the Summer Games Fest, hosted again by Jeff Keighley. Um, and it was pretty good. Uh, it was a good start, I think, to, to all things E3. It started with the reveal of, um, like, a new Borderlands game. I don't have it on here, but it was called Wonderlands, or Tiny Tina's Wonderlands. I like the Borderlands series. They're pretty fun games. Um, I've been meaning to play more of three, but I'm certainly interested. Uh, it's coming out sometime next year. So that was a pretty good reveal. It kind of got leaked beforehand, um, so it wasn't like this huge surprise because we, we kind of knew, like it was rumored there was some kind of new Borderlands game coming out. And yeah, it turned out to be true, but still, uh, it was a cool announcement. And like I said, there was a lot of other really good announcements um, in Games Fest. Um, a couple games that I've already like put on my wish list on Steam, looks like, like co-op games, uh, Endless Dungeon, and the, uh, Annie, uh, the oh God, what was it called? Hold on. It's gonna bother me if I don't get the name right, so let me find it real quick. I have it on my wish list. It's like I think it's like the the Anacrusis, yeah. It's like this cool like 50s vibe space FPS co-op game. It looked pretty cool. Like there was definitely some good stuff at the Summer Games Fest. Of course, the main thing that people are going to remember is Summer Games Fest for this year, <laughs> and it is the first thing on the uh, little like uh, poster board here is Elden Ring. We finally finally got a gameplay trailer for Elden Ring, which was announced uh, two years ago. Uh, I believe it was at Xbox's 2019 E3. It was something around that that time. So, you know, it had been 
a long time since because after that reveal trailer in 2018 we got nothing there was literally nothing in the entire time between the reveal in 2018 and this gameplay trailer uh last week um and my god the game looks amazing i love from software games um bloodborne and dark souls 3 are probably my personal favorites but of course dark souls 1 um sekiro Demon Souls, they're all great games. I love them all in, you know, different ways. But like I said, Bloodborne and Dark Souls 3 are probably my favorite. But Elden Ring is looking like just such a good game. I mean, it, you know, it, it, there's so many different jokes and in-jokes and memes about the, the, the game. There's a whole entire subreddit that's pretty much just a huge meme fest, r slash uh, Elden Ring, which even Jeff Keighley himself was aware of. Uh, it is still aware of, but like, the game just looks fantastic. If, if you haven't seen the, the trailer, Go watch it. It's it looks amazing. Um, you know, uh, there's really not much else to say that hasn't already been said um, by Mordecai or, or Vadi or any of the other big FromSoft guys on the internet. The game just looks incredible. I can't wait. It's coming out in January. Um, Going to be a great game to play early next year because really I think you know most of the, the games that we know about. Um, the only two that I can think of that we know are coming out next year, like in both in January are, and now Elden Ring and then uh, the Pokemon. Um, Legends game, which also looks good, but I mean, I'm sorry, Elden Ring, that's gonna take huge priority. I'm I'm so stoked though, like it looks really really good, uh, and I'm I just I can't wait to play it. Um, you know, about another like half a year till release, I think I'll be good, because there's already tons of stuff that is coming out later this year, uh, that's gonna keep me busy. So while I would have been cool with it releasing uh, later this year, I'm I'm fine with it in January. That's a good time for it, right at the beginning of the year gonna have something or all you know that's something to play right at the beginning it's gonna be great so that was easily the biggest thing from game fest this year jeff keely was able to free himself from gamer prison and show elden ring and it was it was amazing i was i the moment that trailer started and i you know i i, I it saw like it's said uh you know from software and bandai namco i knew it was elden ring it was just it was a beautiful moment um so that was very good. Uh, and then Friday, um, I don't think there was anything on Friday after Games Fest. I think E3, I, yeah, E3, I think, started, you know, like, properly on... Or no, was the Ubisoft one on Friday? God, I can't remember. Point is, after Summer Games Fest, E3 kicked off, and the first, like, big name conference was Ubisoft. Um, I think I only have one thing on here from Ubisoft, which was probably the most surprising thing that they showed, which was... Mario plus Rapid Sparks of Hope. They're making a sequel. I've still never played the original. It looks like a, like a. I mean, I like. I don't have an issue with rabbits or anything. I just. I don't know. I'm not really into like the kind of, uh, XCOM kind of gameplay, tactical kind of gameplay. I get the first game had, um, but I'm honestly kind of intrigued by this one. It's you know taking aspects from like Mario Galaxy, uh, with like rabid lumas and uh like a rabid Liz rosalina and just has a more of like a space vibe so that already has me interested it looks like they're changing up the gameplay a little bit you i think in the first game your movement was based on a grid because of course it was like a, a tactical um you know rpg and it looks like in this new one you can like free move around your your battle space which is nice so i don't know i might pick it up it i think it might be fun i've heard many good things about the first game and it's like Don donkey kong expansion i don't know if i'll ever play it but I'm definitely interested in the sequel. It was a pretty interesting announcement. I never thought it was going to get a sequel, but I guess, you know, it did really well, and it's cool that Nintendo's letting it happen. Um, but that was really the only big thing from Ubisoft for me. There was a couple other things that were cool. Of course, I'm excited for Far Cry 6. I like the Far Cry series. Um, they showed a couple new trailers and stuff. I mean, yeah, it looks good. It's another Far Cry game. I didn't want to include it just because, eh, I mean, I'll, I'm going to play it, but, yeah, nothing, like, mind-blowing or, like, revolutionary, so... Um, yeah, and after Ubisoft, uh, the next big one was uh, Microsoft and Bethesda. They were combined into one because, of course, Microsoft bought Bethesda. Um, and honestly, there was some good stuff, again, like Ubisoft, but really, the only reason I was there was to see Halo, Halo Infinite. Um, Halo is, I mean, probably one of my favorite games series of all time. Probably my favorite FPS series. It's hard for me to narrow down exactly one specific or a couple specific favorite games of all time. But genre by genre, I can probably, you know, easily say Halo is my favorite shooter series. 
um, and it's what pretty much got me into video games, um, Halo 3 specifically. Um, and I love Halo. Um, you know, the more recent games by 343 have been kind of spotty. I personally think Halo 4 is a completely fine game. I did not really like Halo 5 that much, but it's still, you know, good in some aspects. Um, but Halo Infinite, you know, this was supposed to come out last year. It was supposed to be the big Xbox next generation launch title. Sadly, of course, you know, it got delayed until, um, you know, got delayed. And it's going to be coming out still holiday of this year. We still don't have a concrete release date. Um, but definitely from the reveal last year to now, things are definitely looking up. I never really thought the demo that they showed like last year looked particularly awful. But certainly, um, you know, it, it could have been better and it could have looked better and it, it legitimately is looking a lot better we got um the big thing at the for halo infinite at e3 this year was the kind of like the big reveal uh and showcase of the multiplayer which is going to be free to play um and it looks really fun it looks like basically uh halo 3 but with nicer graphics and that's all, that's all i can ask for because halo 3 multiplayer i still play you know, weekly uh, on the Master Chief Collection. I love Halo 3, and again, Halo in general. But Halo 3 is still probably my favorite. And it's just looking like a great mix of Halo 3 and Reach and a new, beautiful HD game. I can't wait, honestly. It looks great. Um, and then we got a little bit uh, more shown about campaign. Nothing too much. Pretty much just like a cutscene and like a little showcase of a little area on the ring. But still, you know, I, I don't blame them for not wanting to show too much because, you know, obviously they don't want to spoil too much about the story. But it looks really good. I'm, like, legitimately excited for Halo Infinite. I mean, I already was, but even more so now. I think 343 is finally going to do right by Halo, by a lot of people. Um, and I think Infinite is really going to be the return uh, that the series really needs after uh, Halo 5. So, I'm really excited. Again, no concrete release date. It's still going to be holiday of this year. You know, this November is the 20th anniversary of the series. Halo Combat Evolved launched 20 years ago. In November of 2001 so I speculate they'll probably want to try and release it in November but if they have to push it even to like December or something that's fine I just I'm I can't wait I'm really excited so I'm definitely gonna be playing a lot of that when it comes out um, so yeah that was a really big thing for me for Microsoft there were also some other good things we got like a, a little like cinematic teaser finally for Bethesda's new game Starfield no gameplay or anything but it seems interesting enough comes out next year um, you know there was some good stuff for sure I guess that Stalker game looks pretty... Really looks really nice graphically. Uh, I've never played those games. But yeah, I was there for Halo. I, I can say I'm pretty satisfied and I'm ready for it. So, yeah. Um, that was like pretty much like the big thing from Microsoft and Bethesda for me. Uh, after that, I believe it was going to be... Um, yeah, Square Enix. Square Enix, honestly, probably one of the weaker conferences at E3. A lot of people will... You know, you'll whenever they talk about the the conferences, Square Enix was definitely one of the more weak ones. They didn't have a ton to show, which is fine, but it didn't help that they stuck like so much of that conference was stuck on the first announcement, which was that they are making uh, and releasing a Guardians of the Galaxy game later this year, which is fine. I like Guardians of the Galaxy. I think it's cool that they're getting a game, but they spent like probably almost half of their conference just showing that game and i don't know like i don't like it when like these conferences drag on and or focus on one specific game you know it's fine to want to talk up your game and show it but they spent too much time on guardians of the galaxy like if you go if you watch the microsoft one or like if you go back and watch the microsoft press con press conference like that i think is like the best way to do E3, and even, like, also the Summer Games Fest. Like, there were a couple times when, like, they showed a game and then they stopped to talk about it. For the most part, though, with Summer Games Fest and Microsoft, it was just game after game after game after game, which is really good. I like having, you know, not too much time spent on one game. Usually the trailer that they show for the game is either long enough or detailed enough that you don't really need someone to come and explain it or talk about it. So the trailers, uh, like, the, the trailer and then gameplay that they showed for Guardians was fine, but they should have just cut it down because it just dragged on for far too long. And, I mean, again, it's it's fine, it's cool, but I don't know, I think a lot of people are still sour about Avengers, uh, the other Marvel game that came out last year. 
And then, like, now with Guardians of the Galaxy, like, it'll probably be okay, but I feel like it's probably just going to get a lot of, like, the same kind of reception and reviews that Avengers got. Obviously, Guardians is, um, or I should say, Guardians is not going to be, like, a multiplayer, like, loot kind of focused weird game that, like, Avengers is. It's going to be single player focused, story driven, no, no DLC, no loot boxes or anything. I don't know if that was, like, a, a thing in Avengers. I never played it, not going to. But it's nice that it's going to be, you know, just like a, st a story driven game, but I don't know. I just, I I'm probably not going to get it. Uh, at least not at launch. I don't know. I just... It looks fine. I just... I don't really care too much. Guardians are cool, but... Eh. Um, and then... We saw a couple other things. Talked about some other, like, Square Enix stuff that's coming out a little bit later. Like, they showed a little bit about Legend of Mana. The remaster is coming out later this month, which I want to get. I probably won't get it at launch just because I'm still waiting to see if a physical release is happening here in the States, officially. If not, I'm going to import a physical copy, which might take a little bit longer. Um, but that does look good. You know, fourth game in the Mana series. Uh, you know, last year we got the remake of Trials of Mana, which I played to through its entirety. So I'm definitely going to get Legend of Mana and, and play it as well. I just, you know, might wait like a week or two extra just because if it doesn't, if the physical release doesn't happen here officially in the States, uh, I'll have to import a copy because I want a physical copy of that game. So um, we saw a little bit about Babylon's Fall, which was a new game being made by Platinum. Um, which was announced, I think, back in 2019. We fought, we, signed, we finally saw gameplay of it. It looks okay. Um, I've seen a lot of people online talking about how it looks kind of iffy and stuff. But I like Platinum games. You know, Bayonetta, and Wonderful 101, um, Astral Chain most recently. They make really good action, character action games. And this one seems pretty cool just because it's going to have, like, you uh, you can play co-op. Which, like, a co-op, like, kind of Bayonetta, Astral Chain kind of game sounds like it could be really fun. So, I'm certainly interested. I'll probably give it a shot whenever it comes out. I don't think they have a release date. I think it might have been this year, maybe next year. I don't remember. But it looks pretty good. I didn't put it on here just because, eh. Really, the only thing that stood out as the big th th new thing from Square Enix, other than Guardians, which I didn't put on here, uh, is the last thing that they announced, which has become like the huge meme of E3 2021, which is Stranger of Paradise Final Fantasy Origins, which was kind of rumored before E3 that, fi that Square Enix was teaming up with Koei Tecmo and Team Ninja uh, to make like a Final Fantasy spinoff. And if you don't know, Koei Tecmo and Team Ninja are the guys who are behind stuff like um, Neo and Neo 2 and uh, the Warriors games like Dynasty Warriors or, of course, the ones people actually care about, Hyrule Warriors. Um, or Fire Emblem Warriors, or, like, even Persona 5 Strikers. Um, but yeah, they're making a Final Fantasy spinoff game. Seems to be tied to or linked to Final Fantasy 1. I've never played the original Final Fantasy, but, like, the main villain antagonist, Chaos, as you'll hear, like, eight times in the reveal trailer. Um, you know, that's from Final Fantasy 1. It, the, the, yeah, the, the trailer is a huge meme. The game seemingly has a pretty lukewarm reception so far. Um, and I definitely understand why, because, like, as you see there, the main character, he, Jack, I mean, you can't really see it fully there, but in that picture, like, if you look at the trailer, like, the character designs are just kind of weird for Final Fantasy 1 aesthetic-y reasons. Um, and, yeah, the, the, the trailer doesn't really leave a good impression. But there is a demo available on the PlayStation 5 only, which uh, you couldn't even play. Like, so... So, the, the reveal trailer happened at, like, the end of Square Enix's thing. And then they, it, sh it said, like, hey, there's a demo that's going to be on PlayStation 5. Well, the demo went up pretty much immediately after that, but the demo data was corrupt. So, if you downloaded it on your PS5 and tried to play it, you couldn't. And it took them, like, two days to fix that. So, you couldn't even play the demo until, like, two days later than they initially wanted people to. But, I, you know, it, it whatever. It finally got fixed. You can play it. I did play the demo. It was, like, about an hour to get from the start to the end where you fight chaos um and then that was the demo honestly it was pretty fun i mean it, like I, I had to, i enjoy my time with it obviously it's probably a very early build of the game um probably still in like an alpha state uh like the brightness was kind of off in the resolution and even the performance i chose to play it in performance mode on my ps5 so you know it targets a higher frame rate but it it dipped and kind of like stuttered constantly so you know it had some issues but of course it's a demo it's it's still early on it's fun enough it's basically like if you've ever played neo or neo 2 it's kind of like that but final fantasy um I, I i think it was fun i'm interested to see where it goes uh as a final product but yeah it was a huge meme 
and it is still a huge meme. I like the meme, though. It's a dumb meme, but I, I like dumb memes. Most memes are dumb. I like it. Whatever. Anyways, that was pretty much the only big thing from Square Enix for me. It was cool to see, like, a new, like, Final Fantasy thing, but they really didn't talk about, you know, we didn't see anything about 16. Um, we didn't see anything about Endwalker, but I was signed with that. I wasn't expecting to see anything about 14, uh, 14's new expansion, Endwalker, because we already got FanFest for that, so. But yeah, no 16, um, no, uh, you know, nothing else really Final Fantasy related other than Stranger of Paradise. Oh, and some weird, like, remasters of the first six games, but it's only on mobile and PC, which is dumb. I don't know why it's not on consoles, but... Yeah, whatever. Anyways, let's move on to the big boy of any E3, for at least me, and what takes up most of the void here, Nintendo. So, honestly, going into Nintendo's Direct, I feel like they had already probably won it for me, just because everything so far had been, like, kind of whatever. Like, if you look at the, the board here, pretty much there's only, like, one big thing from each conference. It's so like Summer Games Fest, even though I, I think overall, Microsoft and Summer Games Fest were probably, like, they were good. But for me, they really only still had, like, one major thing. And, of course, I didn't really, like, know or expect Elden Ring was going to be at Summer Games Fest. But there was, like, rumors about it. Um, but, yeah, like, Elden Ring was the huge thing for Summer Games Fest. At least, and then for me, at least, Halo was a big thing for Microsoft. I wouldn't even say Mario plus Rapid Sparkle was the big thing from Ubisoft, because I don't think anybody was expecting it, but it's probably one of the bigger, cool, new announcements from it, since, you know, again, no one was expecting it, and it really was just, like, the big new thing. I think it was one of the last things they showed off, too, so that was pretty cool. Square Enix had whatever the hell Stranger of Paradise was doing with that trailer. But then, like, Nintendo. Like, there's so much on the board here to talk about, and what is, like, that's like, so exciting. But really, going into Nintendo, I was like, well, we know there's going to be a new Smash character, that alone is always going to be hype, so that alone would have, like, sold it for me. But, we'll, we'll, we'll get to the rest of the stuff. But yes, so they started with, basically, the new Smash character, which is Kazuya from Tekken. I will say, personally, I've never really played any of the Tekken games. I'm not super big on Tekken. I think it's really cool that Kazuya is in. I think, definitely, you know, it makes sense. Bandai Namco, I believe, are the publishers of the Tekken series, if not also the developers. Um, so, you know, makes sense to have one of their franchises in Smash as well, along with, like, Pac-Man and stuff. Um, there were rumors back in Smash for Wii U and 3DS that Heihachi was going to get in, um, but that ended up just being a Mii costume, which I think is also an ultimate now. But nope. And instead of Heihachi, we are getting Kazuya. Again, I don't know much about Tekken. Um, the most I've played of Tekken was in Street Fighter Cross Tekken, and that wasn't even too much either. But he seems cool enough. I know he's a pretty iconic Tekken character. I think he's been there since the beginning. He, he, you know, he looks really fun. Um, we're gonna get in, we're gonna be getting a deep dive into the character by Sakurai later at the end of the month. That's really all I have to say. It wasn't an, an announcement that really excited me, just because again, I've never played Tekken, but you know, I respect it. It's certainly a very long running, well beloved, uh, and recognized fighting game series. Um, just not really for me. But I'll, I'll definitely try him out. I really do like all the other like fighting game characters because Sakurai and his team have done a really good job of incorporating fighting game mechanics from Street Fighter or uh, Fatal Fury into those characters and then putting them into Smash. And I'm sure Kazuya will be no different. So, yeah, uh, that was really cool to start with. New Smash character. We only got one left. We'll have to see who it is later this year. Uh, and then we moved into the next big thing. Which was probably the, other than Elden Ring, uh, this was probably the biggest thing for me at E3 this year. Metroid Dread. It's real. And I still cannot believe that Metroid Dread <laughs> is real. So, Metroid Dread is a new 2D Metroid game, developed by the same people who did the remake of Metroid 2 on the 3S, Metroid Samus Returns, Mercury Steam. But this isn't a remake or anything. This is a brand new game taking place after Metroid Fusion, which released back in 2002 in the Game Boy Advance. Um, so this is like, finally, after all these years, we're getting another episode in the story of Metroid. Um, and it just, it looks so damn good. I loved Samus Returns on the 3DS, and getting a new 2D Metroid game in HD, I love Samus's new suit, the colors, like the little... You know, she still has little bits of the fusion suit on there, but the white looks really great with the blue. 
It just... It, <laughs> the, it, the fact that it's called Dread, which... Uh, that is a whole other thing, but... There is a, a long and storied history to that title. Spanning all the way back to, like, 2004 or 6. It's just... It's amazing. I'm, I'm so, so, so excited to get my hands on Metroid Dread. It's just going to be so nice to have a new Metroid game. You know new in the sense that it is a new game but also it's on a remake it is a, just a new metroid game everyone gets to go in fresh it's just it looks so great i'm so excited from the gameplay that they showed at the treehouse after the stream and the trailers and the music it just it looks amazing there's a special edition that's coming out too but i'm probably not gonna be able to get it because nintendo special editions are just a bitch to try and get even though i really want it because it comes with a really big meaty art book and like a steel book and stuff i really want it because i really like metroid but I'm probably not going to get it because you can't even pre-order it anymore. It really sucks. But, yeah. That was huge. I That is that is probably the biggest thing from E3 and, you know, let alone Nintendo. Uh, Nintendo's Direct. But, yeah, I'm super pumped for Metroid Dread. Comes out in October. Comes out this year. It's insane. I'm, I just, I can't wait. So, that's going to be awesome. A couple other things. Um, uh, as is... <laughs> this year is an anniversary of a lot of things. Donkey Kong, um, I think Kid Icarus, Metroid, uh, Super Monkey Ball, apparently. I didn't even know this, but I believe this year is the 20th anniversary of Super Monkey Ball. Um, and to commemorate that, they're releasing Super Monkey Ball Banana Mania, which is a compilation of like remasters of Monkey Ball 1, 2, and Monkey Ball Deluxe. Um, and I played a little bit of 1 and 2 back in the day on GameCube, but I've never owned them. Uh, I have Banana Blitz HD when that came out. Uh, I got it, like, a little bit later for, like, really cheap. I haven't played it. I've heard Banana Blitz isn't exactly the greatest of the Monkey Ball games. Um, but, you know, the remake of it, or remaster, was nice just to have a, a Monkey Ball game. And these are going to be really nice because Monkey Ball 1 and 2 are actually good Monkey Ball games that people care about. Um, so I'm definitely going to be picking those up when they come out, or picking up Banana Mania when it comes out because it's just one game with all of them on it. Um... Because, yeah, I, I do like Monkey Ball. It's, it's a fun little series. Um, and there's going to be a lot of stuff to do in the Banana Mania collection because it's going to have three games and all the mini games from them. So it's going to be great. I'm looking forward to that. I think that's also out in September. Uh, or I should say it's in September. Metroid is in October. Another thing that's in October is uh, Mario Party Superstars. So uh, I, I actually just recently picked up Mario Party or Super Mario Party because, uh, you know, they recently added the online, and I wanted to actually, like, give it a go because of that. And, of course, they announced this. Kind of have some buyer's remorse, but, hey, it was a little bit cheaper, and this is looking much, much better than Super Mario Party. This is basically taking the 3DS game, um, uh, Mario Party the Top 100, and they're taking that, because that game was 100 of the best minigames from all of the games in the series, but it was pretty much just that. There was, like, one board... It was really whatever. The main point of that game on the 3DS was, hey, here's 100 of the best minigames from the series. You can play them, and that's it. And no one wants to just play Mario Party minigames on their own. Um, so they're taking kind of what they did with that game, and what they're doing is they're, they're taking that. I don't think it's necessarily all of the exact same 100 best minigames. It might be. I have no idea. But they're taking 100 of the best minigames from all of, of the games in the series, of course, remaking them in this re I mean, beautiful HD um, on top of five boards from the N64 Mario Party games. So Mario Party 1, 2, and 3. Now, personally, I think five boards still isn't really that much. I think they probably could have gone a little bit more. Maybe, you know, seven or eight boards. I don't actually know how many boards in total are in Mario Party 1, and then 2, and then 3. Obviously, I know they're remaking them completely from the ground up, and they look a hell of a lot better than they did in the N64 games, because those were pretty much just like PNGs, whereas these are actual full 3D boards. Um, but still, 5, not really a ton, but hey, for me, I never played any of the N64 Mario Party games. These boards, while they are old, they're going to be new to me, and I'm sure they're going to be new to a lot of people um, who never really got the chance to play any of the older Mario Party games. So I'm super excited. It looks great. The gameplay they showed, again, beautiful game. Um, the, I'm sure the mini games are going to be a blast, you know, curating, handpicking all the best ones from all the games. I'm looking forward to it. And it's going to have online right out of the box on launch day. Um, so yeah, I think it's going to be really good. 
Um, next big thing from Nintendo, uh, actually before we get into that, um, Shin Megami Tensei 5, we got a new trailer and we finally get to see gameplay of the game. Uh, release date was leaked beforehand on the game's official Japanese website, it's coming out in November worldwide. Honestly, it looks really cool. I love the protagonist design, um, uh, I, I'm not sure if it's a guy or a girl, but they, I'll say, they've got a great design when they're fused with like the demon that you're partnering with in the game. They've got, like, long, lush, flowing blue locks of hair. They've got a cool, like, like laser sword that comes out of their fingers and makes a blade. It's so, so freaking cool looking. Um, and, yeah, it just it looks really solid. I, I picked up um, the re HD remaster of SMT3 that came out a couple weeks ago. Uh, I haven't popped it in to play it yet, but I'm definitely going to play through that before we get to 5 later this year. Um, and I'm really excited, though. Yeah, you know, I love the Persona series, but I've never really played any of the core uh, original SMT games. Um, but I'm going to start with 3, and 5 is looking legitimately fantastic from what I've seen. Um, you know, if you like JRPGs, I'm sure it's probably already on your radar, but it looks great. So that's going to be awesome. Huge JRPG. Exclusive to Switch, too. So that's going to be a, another a huge game for the Switch to have. You know, it sucks that we don't have Persona games on the Switch, but we're going to have SMT uh, five and we already have SMT three, so those kind of filled the gap because obviously they're still you know made by Atlas, same character designs and stuff of the demons that the are used as personas or shadows in, in the Persona series. So SMT five though looks great, can't wait for it. Out in November, on uh, November twelfth worldwide, so that's really cool. The next big thing, which wasn't necessarily rumored, but there were like people were getting um, like polls before E three asking. Hey, how much would you want to pay for like a new WarioWare game? So that made people think, oh well, we're getting a new WarioWare game. And yeah, we are getting a new WarioWare game, and it looks awesome. Um, WarioWare Get It Together was announced, and it is looks really fun. It's it's like a co-op. It's gonna have like co-op up to two players. It doesn't. They didn't confirm whether or not it's gonna have online. I really hope it has online. Um, but at the very least, it's gonna have local two-player co-op. All the micro games are like you know, can be played cooperatively. And it just looks really fun. Um, they didn't really show too much of it at the E3 Direct or the Treehouse gameplay afterwards, but it looks really fun. That's, I think, coming out in September, and I'm really excited for it because um, it's been a long time since a new WarioWare game has come out. Because we got WarioWare Gold on the 3DS, but that was like a compilation of a bunch of older things. So to get a brand new WarioWare game, it's going to be awesome. So, yeah. Uh... And then another huge surprise here. No, I don't think anybody expected. Advance Wars. Uh, not just Advance Wars, but the second game as well are getting like remade, remastered, whatever you want to call it. Um, I've never played them, but I believe they're made by the same people who made Fire Emblem Intelligent Systems, and they look really fun. I know people love the original games, so seeing them being remade uh, out at the end of the year in December, I'll probably pick them up because I do like Fire Emblem, and these look really charming and quite fun from the gameplay that they showed. So, looking forward to that. Uh, finally give Advance Wars a try. And then, uh, the last thing that they... Oh, wait. Did we run through all of the... Did we run through all of the Yoshi music? Yes, we did. Okay, wow. We went through that entire 30-minute thing. Okay. Um, well, since we're about to talk about it, I guess I'll just pull up in here in the recommended relaxing Breath of the Wild music. So yeah, Breath of the Wild. So the last thing that they ended the E3 Direct with was a little blowout of Zelda news. Um, information about the DLC coming to um, uh, Hyrule Warriors Age of Calamity. I never even finished Age of Calamity. It's a fine game. I just, I don't know, I fell off of it. But I'll probably try and finish it at some point. I might get the DLC, but nah, no one's, like, it's cool, but not the biggest thing. People, of course, were wanting to see Breath of the Wild too. Um, but after they talked about Age of Calamity, they, once they talked again about Skyward Sword HD uh, coming out next month. Again, a Zelda game not too many people are, you know, super fond of. I personally love Skyward Sword. Um, I'm really excited to play it again uh, in HD, 60 FPS and all that. It's a little weird that they're not talking about it more or showing any of the new stuff that's going to be in Skyward Sword HD. Especially because it's out in like a month. But regardless, I like Skyward Sword. Yeah, they remind us, hey, it's coming out next month. Check it out. Yeah, so that's cool. Uh, and then the the big, the two big things. So the Zelda Game & Watch, that's going to be coming out in November. 
kind of similar to the Super Mario Brothers Game & Watch that came out last year for Mario's 35th anniversary, for Zelda's 35th anniversary, which is this year, aside from Skyward Sword HD, um, we are going to be getting a really cool Legend of Zelda Game & Watch. Um, looks very similar to the Super Mario Brothers one, obviously different colors and different games. In the Zelda one, you get the original Legend of Zelda, you get Zelda 2, The Adventure of Link. You get the Game Boy original version of Link's Awakening, which is kind of lame that they didn't include the Game Boy Color version. I don't know why they didn't include the Game Boy Color version and decided to opt for the Game Boy original, considering the screen is a color screen. I don't know. It's weird, but whatever. And then you get a like uh, remake of sorts of the Game & Watch game Vermin, um, but like Link is like the guy that you're controlling, kind of like how in the Super Mario Brothers one, it's a remake of Ball, but Mario is the one that you're controlling. So, you know, that's pretty cool. Um, I'll probably pick it up. I like, I really like the, the Mario Brothers game watch. It's a really substantial piece of, um, you know, Nintendo hardware. A very cool memorabilia thing. Um, so yeah, I'll probably pick up the Zelda one. It's neat. Unfortunately, also, they did confirm that outside of the game and watch, they don't have any other compilations or games planned for the anniversary so uh even though it seemingly would have made a lot of sense to compile like twilight princess hd uh and wind waker hd from the wii u and pop them on the switch and maybe even uh put 3d uh majora's mask 3d and ocarina of time 3d in hd and put them on the switch doesn't seem like that's going to be happening at least not yet not for the 35th anniversary of zelda which is unfortunate especially for twilight princess and wind waker considering those games i feel like wouldn't really need a whole lot of work done you know, run on the Switch, but, well, yeah, that's just how it is. And then, of course, the big one. They ended it finally with a new trailer of Breath of the Wild 2. We got to see a little bit of gameplay, and it's still really cryptic. It's still really weird, but it looks it looks like Breath of the Wild. I'm, you know, I'm, I'm as excited as any other people. Breath of the Wild was a fantastic game, and to get more of that, it's, it's going to be fantastic. Um... They are targeting a uh, 2022 release, so not this year. I wasn't exactly expecting it this year at all. But yeah, so um, yeah, that was that was pretty much Nintendo's E3 and all the major things I wanted to talk about from E3 this year in, in general. Overall, I think this year was kind of personally pretty weak. Um, in the past, usually I would only really watch the the major companies press conferences because usually those are the only ones that are occurring stuff like ubisoft ea sony microsoft and nintendo there are a couple others here and there i think like the pc gaming show has always kind of been around um but this year there were a lot of because everything was going digital a lot of companies decided to do their own conferences and i tuned into a lot of those as well but they were just really boring. Like, I mean, there's nothing wrong with indie games or smaller games, because that's what was announced at a lot of them. And like I said, there's nothing wrong with that, but nothing that really like sticks with you, um, you know, like these other like major companies shows. Um, but like I said, you know, um, even even disregarding those, the the, ba the big companies, the major companies that had conferences like Microsoft and um, Nintendo and, and Square Enix and whatnot. Honestly, they they were. I mean, I, th I think Nintendo definitely won it, at least for me, um, and probably a lot of people as well. They had just the most like new games being announced, and also you know showing gameplay, and not just like cinematic trailers with you know no gameplay. Because uh, that was like a big thing about Microsoft's. Like a lot of the games were like coming out later, like next year, and it was just like cinematic trailers, no gameplay. You know, that's it's cool to see that, but. With no gameplay, I don't know anything about the game, like how it plays. I can make assumptions, but, you know, with with Nintendo, they showed a lot of new games coming out. And, yeah, they had, like, fancy trailers, but they also had gameplay, which was nice. And pretty much all these games are coming out this year, uh, without with exceptions being, like, Breath of the Wild 2. But pretty much everything that they talked about or sh showed is coming out this year, which is nice. Um, whereas, like, with Square Enix and stuff, like, that new Final Fantasy game, it's coming out next year. Elden Ring... Yeah, that gets a pass because it's Elden Ring, but yeah, coming out next year, but it's January, so at least it has a release date. Um, you know, so overall, I'd say this E3 is pretty weak. Um, a lot of the, the press conferences were just really whatever. Some of them didn't need to happen. Like, I didn't even go over, like, Capcoms because, honestly, 
that didn't need to happen. Um, like Bandai Namco had their own, but it was like for one game. Like why? Like, it's just some of them were so pointless. Some of them were just so whatever. And yeah, I don't know. There was definitely some good stuff this year. And for me, what you see, this was what was good. Um, you know, for me, and I think a lot of the stuff here kind of is the the bigger, more notable stuff. Um, but yeah, the C3, honestly, kind of weak. Um, you know, and even even like look like thinking back to 2019, 2019 was also kind of weak, aside from like Microsoft and Nintendo. Um, and it's kind of the same here. Microsoft was pretty good. Nintendo was pretty good. Other than that, everything else was kind of meh. And I feel like, you know, um, Sony hasn't been in E3 in a while, and I don't know if them being here would have made it any better or not, but it would have been something to talk about. But, yeah. So, anyways, I think that's enough talking. That's how I how I uh, think, what I think about E3 2021. Like I said, overall, not bad. There was definitely some good stuff, but yeah, I don't know. We'll we'll see how we'll, we'll see how next year goes if there is another E3, whether it be another digital thing like this or like an actual physical event depending on the state of the world next year. We'll have to see. But hey, there's definitely some great stuff coming out still in the year uh, and beyond. So, yeah, I mean, I can't complain. Lots of lots of cool games, some huge things. I've said this to my friends, um, but 2021 is legitimately shaping up to be potentially one of the best years in gaming for me personally um so already i've gotten a sequel to persona 5 with persona 5 strikers which is probably one of my favorite jrpgs ever um and persona 5 strikers was fantastic um uh you know some other pretty good early releases like Returnal on the PS5. Ratchet & Clank, I don't have it up here because it wasn't really part of E3. But Ratchet & Clank Rift Apart came out um, pretty much right as E3 was starting. And that game is fantastic so far. I love Ra uh, Ratchet & Clank Rift Apart so far. It is a fantastic game. If you have a PS5, absolutely do yourself a favor and play that game. It is wonderful fun. Um, um, you know... Uh, uh, what, I'm, I'm sorry, I'm drawing a blank here. But... Um, uh, Wow, what was I saying? PS5 stuff. Um, oh yeah, I don't I don't know where I was going with that, but yeah, Ratchet and Clank is great. Um, of course, Returnal, like I said, it was really good. Um, Persona 5 Strikers, um, Monster Hunter Rise. That's what I was gonna say. Monster Hunter Rise. I love Monster Hunter World. That was the first Monster Hunter game I played, and it is potentially one of my favorite games of all time. But Monster Hunter Rise has taken it a step above with the new stuff that they introduced. I love Monster Hunter Rise. I've played it so much and am probably going to keep playing it throughout the entire year and beyond. It is such a fun game with a great gameplay loop. Up to four players. Play it with a bunch of friends. It's some of the most like fun you can have. It's it's a simple you know concept. It's literally, yeah, you go out and hunt monsters. But it's so much more depth to it than that. It's such, such a fun game. I love Monster Hunter Rise. That's a huge game for me. Probably one of my favorite releases this year as well. Resident Evil 8, that's a great game. That's a huge new Resident Evil game, and it was fantastic fun. I already can't wait to replay it. Once I have my new computer, I'm going to finally be able to stream it, which I'll talk about that a little bit later, actually. Um, but I love my first playthrough of that game, and that was a huge, great game. It's getting DLC. It's going to be awesome. Um, and then just looking beyond, uh, you know, coming up, I, like I said, Skyward Sword. I love Skyward Sword. I get to play one of my favorite Zelda games again. Um... 14 years later, I'm getting a sequel to The World Ends With You. That is probably like Persona 5, one of my favorite JRPGs ever made. Easily my favorite Nintendo DS game ever made. And I'm finally getting a sequel. I'm getting a sequel that I had honestly never thought was going to happen. But, lo and behold, we get an anime for the original game, and we're getting a sequel this year. Um, I get... Uh, what else? Is anything else cool coming out in July? I think so. Um, other than The World Ends With You. That's probably the biggest thing. But, you know, I'm getting a new World Ends With You game. I'm getting a new Halo game. I'm getting a new Metroid game. Uh, Shin Megami Tensei. Um, you know, WarioWare. Like, there are so many great games that really speak to me. That I really like. Um, but especially the really big ones. Like Halo. Uh, and The World Ends With You. And a new 14 expansion. And Walker. That's gonna be huge. I love Final Fantasy XIV. 
Um, like, there's just so many great games that have already come out and are still going to come out later this year. And it's just, it's insane that it's all happening this year. There's so many great games um, that, like I said, 2021 is legitimately shaping up to be potentially one of the best years in gaming for me personally, and probably for a lot of other people as well. So I'm just really excited. Um, E3 has really bolstered that more since we get to see all these other, you know, these, we get to see these games for the first time and know that they're coming so soon. It's just, it's amazing. Um, but yeah, that is, that is E3 2021. My mouth is starting to get really dry <laughs> and I want to move on to playing um, Chicory. So I'm going to go ahead and start setting that up because I actually just downloaded it before I started. So I actually have to pop it up and set up a scene and make sure everything is all well and good. So I'm going to probably put up the BRB screen. Well, actually, well, I mean, you'll, you'll yeah, I'm going to like set up the scene for it and whatnot. And then, um, and then we'll, we'll, yeah, I'll be back and we'll start playing that game and we're going to see how that goes. So yeah, anyways, that's enough blabbing about E3 2021. Um, I hope you enjoyed. Like I said, it was pretty good. Um, and I'm, you know, I like sharing my opinions and, and thoughts about it. Um, but yeah. Uh, anyways, let me get that set up, and I will be right back. Also, wait, hang on. Let me check here real quick in the comments. Yes, Nintendo's E3 was dope. And yes, looking forward to Halo Infinite for Xbox. Yep, yeah, it's it's going to be good. Hey, I'm look, seriously looking forward to that and everything else. But yeah. I already talked about that for almost 50 minutes, so, <laughs> yeah. Um, anyways, yeah, let me get Chicory set up, and I'll be right back, guys. <laughs> 